So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome you here, to welcome you to Let's Talk. Applause. It's a pleasure to be here, because you have come here. And my name is Michael Hazan. It's an honor to talk in front of you. And, well, there's a lot I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about Pride and Prejudice. Well, I wanted to talk about how to get over a breakup. I wanted to talk about the fact that there will be no more Pirates of the Caribbean with Johnny Depp, and then you... The new Pirates of the Caribbean will be written by the screenwriters of Deadpool. But instead of this, instead of all these funny things, we're going to talk about how you should not feel insignificant, how you should avoid depression and other stuff. So great, great news, very optimistic. And I think that many of you have heard the phrase, we live in a society. This phrase, in fact, has been turned into a very ugly and unfunny meme. But uh, in my opinion, that's true. I think that it's really hard to establish your own sense of unique identity in a world full of 7 billion people. I think that our ability to transform the world, to change it, to influence the ever-going change has diminished in the way of it. This very year, our own faculty curator was made, was made quit his job. He is one of the kindest men I've ever known. He has done nothing but support of the students. He stood with us during our exams. He has spoken, for, uh, spoken up for us several times. He did everything a great creator should have done. So of course, when we have heard about it, it was devastating. I believe that we have done everything in our power to help him. We have scorched the internet for some kind of jobs for him. We have sent his resume to each and every company we have ever known, but we had the lack of the Irish. We did not have any effect on the situation. But, oh, there's always a but, I mean, that, that wouldn't be the optimistic story to tell. We managed to give him some time. The, the scariest thing about this situation was seeing the man who was always giving, providing comfort to us, needing comfort for himself. And we gave him this comfort. We gave him just three weeks, and that was enough. During these three weeks, he was invited to a new department in Gimo, in this very university, and he continued to work here without any problems, without any pay cuts. That was a fantastic result. And I mean, we couldn't believe it because, well, we have done a lot, but it wasn't enough. So this little thing, it gave us enough comfort to believe that even the smallest of actions can have or well, equal and opposite reactions, but even the smallest of actions can bring change. If you have heard about Rosa Parks, one of the Afro-American who, who helped to end the segregation in American public transport back in the 1960s, all she did was not stand up. If you know, the buses in America back in the 90, uh, 1960s, there were separate seats for black men and there were separate seats for white men. So Rosa Parks, she sat on the seat for the white, uh, white people and she refused to get up when uh, asked to do so. She was arrested. There was a court hearing and in the end, the Supreme Court held that there should be no segregation in buses. A simple action. She just didn't get up. And that brought a whole, new, a whole new dimension of tolerance, of understanding. It was a first step. It was a small step, but it was a great one, necessary at this very time. Why I didn't click? Never mind. So, what I want to say is that you are significant. You might believe that, well, I, I do not do much. I, you might believe, well, there's little to nothing I can do. And, uh, well, that's so. You can't do much. Well, uh, I mean, like, you're not the president of this country. You might be. I strongly believe that everyone should try at least to become president once in his life, but there's high probability that you won't. I have accepted this. I have accepted that at some time, everyone I have known at this university will forget me. I have accepted that, well, I believe I have done much. I have done everything that I could. I believe that one day there will, be, uh, there will be a person who comes up, who has the same ideas that I had at some time, and he will implement them in a much better way, and he will be rightfully cherished for it. And I accept this. I accept that, well, change is important, but nothing that I have done is worthless, and nothing that you have done is worthless, nothing will be, because it helps you become better people. Every change you bring, everything you do has an effect on your own character. 
I mean, that's kind of hard to understand because, well, like, getting up to the university at the right time at 6 a.m., you're like, what? Why? God, why? How can that influence? No, that helps build up your character. So, like, the dean is right when he says that when you hear the sound of drilling on the street, and he's like, why? When everyone's like, why? Why, sh why can't we make it stop? Is there, there is so much noise, we can't stop. He says, it helps to build up your character. Well, I believe there's, he's a bit of a liar, but uh, the thing is, it does. Helps you stay calm, helps you walk on through all the bad stuff that might happen in your life. I certainly hope it doesn't. So, to round up, uh, to round up all these stories I have told you, there's a tale. A tale I really love. I, mean, I think some of you have heard about it. So there's, this tale is set in medieval times. There was this king who really liked decapitating his own people, like cutting the head off. And the, the, <laughs> this he liked too. Uh, so one, uh, once upon a time, he was going through this village, and he saw a shepherd's boy, and he suddenly was like, why can't I decapitate him? Why can't I like, cut his own head? So he did asking questions. If a person didn't ask, uh, answer the question asked, he cut his head off. He asked him, how many seconds are there in eternity? And the shepherd's boy answered. So king, imagine a mountain of pure diamond. Every thousand years, a little bird comes and sharpens his beak on the side of a mountain. When the whole mountain is chiseled away, the first second of eternity will have passed. And while you might think, like, that's a hell of a long time, well, I believe that's a hell of a bird. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you.